So let's have a look today at a binary type geothermal power station. Let's start where the process starts and that's at the bottom or deep into the earth. We can see the red area here, this signifies heat. The earth's core is around five to 7,000 degrees Celsius and that heat from the core is radiated outwards. When we get to this point here, it's gonna be several hundred degrees Celsius. And above that, if we have a porous or a semi-permeable aquifer, we're gonna be able to store some water. So the water is gonna be stored in the aquifer and the water is gonna be heated up by this heat being radiated outwards from the core. Now, some of it might turn to steam and some of it will stay as liquid. We actually call this a water dominated reservoir. But let's just imagine for a moment it's entirely water based or water filled because about 90% of all geothermal resources use water dominated reservoirs. And let's imagine that water is then going to enter through this red pipe here and it's going to go up this red pipe, which we're going to call our production pipe or our production line. And it's going to end up at this valve here. The valve that I'm indicating now is called the production well head. Now the fluid, the geofluid or the hot water comes out and it goes into a heat exchanger. That's this large gray item you're seeing in the middle of the screen now. Now the heat exchanger is going to exchange the heat with a working fluid. So let's just finish up with our geofluid first. So the hot water comes in along here into the heat exchanger and then it comes out of the orange pipe here and goes back in. This valve here is called the injection head valve. And we're gonna go down now and you can see the injection pipe, the orange one goes all the way down and it goes back in to our water dominated reservoir. Okay, so that's more or less all that the geofluid does. It comes up as a very hot fluid in the red pipe and it goes back down into the water reservoir at a slightly lower temperature. But it exchanges the heat in the heat exchanger here. And the working fluid that's in this yellow pipe here and here is normally going to be something with a low boiling point. Now the reason for that is because as the fluid, the working fluid, comes in here, it's coming along this pipe, it goes into the heat exchanger, it's then going to be heated up by our geofluid, that's our hot water, and then it's going to turn to vapour. Now if it has a low boiling point, it's going to turn to vapour at a lower temperature. This is very useful because the geofluid used for binary type geothermal power stations has a much lower temperature than the geofluid used for other types of geothermal power stations. Normally, for a plant like this, you'll have something like propane, isobutane, or maybe an ammonia water mixture. And these have low boiling points. You might even have some form of refrigerant, but perhaps not. But all of these have low boiling points, and they're going to turn to vapor when they're heated up by the geofluid. And then you're going to get this vapor coming out of the yellow pipe here, along here, along there, and into a turbine. Now this turbine is very large for the application that we're using it for here, but it's more for demonstration purposes. And the vapor as it goes in is going to drive the turbine and cause the turbine to rotate. As the turbine rotates, it's going to drive a generator. That's this item here. And as the rotor inside the generator turns, we're going to generate electricity. So we've now used the vapor for what we want to use it for, and we've generated some electricity. If we go around the opposite side, we now need to condense the vapor and get it back out again so we can pump it. So it comes out through a condenser that sees two yellow pipes here, and it's going to go back to the heat exchanger. So it's being cooled down underneath the turbine, it's being turned back into a liquid, and then it's going back into our heat exchanger. So that's essentially the entire process for this working fluid. So we'll heat it up, comes out as a vapor, goes to the turbine, is cooled down after it's done its work, and then is pumped back to the heat exchanger, and the process continues all over again. Now you might ask yourself, what's cooling down 
the working fluid then? What's, what's enabling it to condense? Well, we'll use a cooling tower like this one here to cool down the vapor. And what's going to happen is we're going to have a cooling water circuit. And imagine for a moment you've got water in this in the bottom of the cooling tower. And that's in this area here. And we can draw it out from the bottom of the cooling tower. And we'll take it along this blue pipe and all the way to a condenser. We'll cool down the working fluid vapor. It'll come back out here. Let's have a look along this pipe, along this pipe, along here, and into the top. And it goes into the top of our cooling tower. And then we'll cool the cooling water down with the air. And then we'll send it back to the turbine again. So essentially what's happening here is we're having a series of heat exchanging operations. We need to get the geofluid out of the ground and it's going to be hot. We're going to use some of that heat to heat up the working fluid and turn it into a vapor. Then we're going to send the geofluid back into the ground. The working fluid is going to do the work. It's going to drive the turbine, but then we need to cool that back down to get it pumped back to the heat exchanger again. And in order to cool it back down again, we're going to use the cooling tower. And that essentially is the way that a binary type geothermal power station works. It's interesting to note that this was actually the first ever type of geothermal power station used. And the first ever power station or geothermal power station was actually built in Italy about 100 years ago. But the reason that this type of power station was used back then is because the fluid you get out the ground is often corrosive or it can be quite corrosive and it can also scale. In other words, you'll end up with a thin film of sort of hard material that builds up on your turbine and this all creates massive problems. So in order to get around these problems, you just have a heat exchanger. You exchange the heat within the heat exchanger and then you use a nice clean fluid to be the working fluid. And that's the one that drives the turbine and won't damage the turbine because it's not corrosive and it won't scale or anything like that. The other big advantage with a binary type geothermal power station is that you can try to keep the liquid always as a liquid. And what I mean here is when it comes out of the ground, it's going to be a liquid if you put it under pressure. And this is quite useful because if it's not a liquid, if it's vaporizing off or if it's flashing off to a vapor, then you're going to have a problem with scaling. So by keeping the hot geofluid here under pressure, you can keep it as a liquid and you prevent scaling or at least minimize it as much as possible. The other massive advantage with a binary type geothermal power station is that you only need a fluid to come out of the ground at 80 degrees or 70 degrees, whatever, and not 100 degrees. Now, if you're using water and turning it to steam, you need a minimum of 100 degrees. So the geofluid has to come out of the ground at 100 degrees minimum, ideally a lot more. Whereas a binary type power plant, because we're using a different working fluid like propane or isobutane, we can have geofluid coming out of the ground at about 80 degrees or 70 degrees. And it's still going to turn our working fluid to a vapor. So we're still going to be able to use that to drive a turbine. That's not true if our working fluid is water. And there is a lot more geofluid in the ground at 80 degrees Celsius than there is at 150 degrees Celsius. And that means we've got a lot more opportunity to install binary type geothermal power stations than we have with the other two types of geothermal power station or the main two types. Anyway, that's how a binary type geothermal power station works. And in our next video, we're gonna explain the differences between all three types of geothermal power stations or the main types that are employed today and exactly how all of them work. Thanks very much for your time.